Okay, hello, good afternoon. This is Dr. Garayas, and this is for MED 120 Medical Terminology, and it's chapter 10 in your textbook, The Musculoskeletal System. So, when we're talking about the musculoskeletal system, it's pertaining to not only your muscles, but your skeletons as well. And, you know, one breaks down, the other one. Uh, remember we talked about how the heart and the lungs are cousins? Well, uh, musculoskeletal systems, they're like, brothers and sisters, brothers and brothers, sisters and sisters. You mess with one, the other one will definitely get messed up with. So let's look at, real quick, when you look at, uh, the, um, before we get into the anatomy and physiology of it, who are the masters of the musculoskeletal system? And it's usually uh, orthopedics. So let's look at, let me open up uh, some here and then uh, let's get if you could see that here in the upper left, maybe make it a little bit bigger. Orthopedics. Orthopedic medicine. So you have ortho, right, which means to be straight, ped, foot. Now, uh, think about it. Um, if you break anything in your body, are you walking re even remotely straight? But orthopedic or orthopedic medicine, they're the ones who are going to straighten out the bones and they're the... They're, it's a surgical service, so a lot of the things they do is surgery um, and orthopedics. And let me cut it up for you so that at least you know the parts pertaining to straighten of your feet. But it's not necessarily the feet that we're talking about. It's uh, all the muscles and bones. Okay? So the muscular system and the skeletal system, and you put it together, that's the musculoskeletal system. So now... I'm not trying to get into the anatomy of it all uh, because you'll have that in anatomy and physiology but you need to uh, look at all the words that deal with um, um, that deal with uh, this particular department uh, orthopedic medicine orthopedic surgery um, um, you know um, and such and such so right off the bat those are going to deal with your arms and legs which is your appendages and they're going to deal with articulation, which is motion or movement. The way you articulate your joints. And remember, there's a difference between bones and joints. Bones are the hard structures and uh, joints are the, the spaces in between. And again, you mess up with the spaces in between, like arthritis, inflammation or infection of your arthur or your joints. Let's write that word down just as a quick review. Okay, and orthopedic medicine, uh, musculoskeletal, uh, they deal with that. So we already talked about poesis, hematopoiesis, uh, development of blood, um, cruciate ligaments. Ligaments are, are things that connect um, uh, muscles to muscles, okay? and you have a whole bunch of them that stabilize all your joints so you mess with the ligaments messes with the muscles messes with the joints Do you see how this these all of these systems even though we're discussing them separately they are actually connected so you have voluntary versus involuntary muscles so there are some muscles that are voluntary airy pertaining to volun when you when you voluntarily do something that means you're you 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 know and understand it. So, for example, skeleton mu skeletal muscles are voluntary muscles. And they will do what? They will do what you tell them to. Cardiac muscle or smooth muscle, and we already talked about visceral muscles, or the muscles of your guts, that already, because you can't control that. Remember we talked about the GI system, that the second you put some food in your mouth, everything else is automatic after that. The only thing you can control is the hand, or the skeletal muscle, right that put the food in your mouth to begin with the second it goes in your mouth everything is automatic so your cardiac muscles and your smooth muscles they are involuntary the prefix in meaning not so something's voluntary that means you need a brain you need to make an actual decision to do it involuntary is you're doing everything automatically now you gotta know the different kinds of motions and when you're going through the motions pun intended, 
you see they're opposites, so you got to know them. Adduction versus abduction. When you abduct somebody, you're taking them away from somebody. So abduction is to move away from the midline. Adduction is the exact opposite, move toward the midline. Flexion and, and extension. When you flex your muscles, that means you're decreasing the angle of your joint. Let me show you a picture of flexion. So when you flex your muscles, here's an image. You see when you flex your muscles, when you're making a muscle right here, whoopsies, let me go in there and uh, look at that. So flexion, do you see the angle? It went from 180 degrees, 90 degrees, and then you flex even more, less than 90 degrees. So in flexion, the angle is getting shorter. And in extension, when you're reaching out, the angle is getting bigger. So it can go from like 45 degrees to 90 degrees to 180 degrees. Okay? and that's flexion versus extension. And you could do the same thing for each one of these, and the best thing to do is look at a picture, and Google it, and uh, 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 a picture is worth a thousand words. Pronation versus supination. Pronation, think what? Palm down. Uh, and then know that these are opposites, so that um, you know that supination. Inversion is the opposite of eversion. Dorsiflexion is the opposite of plantar flexion. And this is how I remember plantar flexion. Um, let's uh, scroll a little bit down more. Plantar flexion, right here, that's when you plant your foot into the ground. Now, if you look at this uh, picture right here, let me center it a little bit. These are some muscles. Pan back out a little bit. Now, you don't it is not in your best interest to try to memorize this stuff because, we, again, just like week one, all of this stuff is Greek and Latin. So you got to figure out ways to mem memorize it and, and also to use your visual. So you could look at some of these words and then you could try to figure out that, that you can use your medical terminology to remember it. For example, if you look down here, that's the biceps femoris. Bi means two, so, and femur or femur, femoral, that means it's got to be in your upper leg. So biceps femoris has to be the two muscles in the top of your leg. Your gluteus maximus, your glutes, it's your butt region right here, right, or your derriere or your posterior, and you have a gluteus maximus. Some muscles are named after their size. So you have a gluteus maximus, medius, and minimus. So which one's the biggest one? The maximus. Which one's the, bi min the smallest one? Minimus. Um, some are, uh, right down here, some are named after people, so Achilles or like, you know, characters. Um, look at our triceps brachii right here. That, their triceps has how many heads? Sep or sef means head. So tricep, that means there's three heads. Brachii is the location. Brachii means the upper arm. So your triceps brachii is in your upper arm and there's three of them. Your biceps brachii is in your upper arm and there's two of them. Pectoralis major, right here, your pecs, your chest. That means it's the major muscle. Right underneath, you have the minor muscle. Which one's going to be bigger? Some others are based on shape. Like if you look right here, the deltoid, delta is a triangle. And if you can see here, your deltoid or your shoulder muscle kind of forms a little triangle. Okay? Some are named after, uh, another named after shape. So, for example, if you look here in... Um, the face, the orbicularis oculi and the orbicularis oris. Oculi means your ocular, your eye, pertaining to your eye, and oris means pertaining to or oral or pertaining to your mouth. So your orbicularis oculi or your orbicularis oris, orb, and an orb is what? Round. The muscles around your mouth are round. The muscles uh, that uh, open and close your eyes are also round. There are some muscles that are straight, like right here, your rectus abdominis, right? Um, those muscles are straight. Rectus means straight. Brachioradialis. Brachio means to wrap around or to surround. So where is it wrapping around? It wraps around your what? Your upper arm, brachio, and the radial part of your bone. Okay? What else? Here, oh, here's some pictures of all those um, body movements that you need to know. 
So what could I do? Could I easily put an exam next week, week 8, um, that has the pictures and write A, B, C, D, E, F, G? I can easily do that. Uh, we already talked about ligaments. Remember, ligaments connect uh, um, 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 what's the best way to put it? Strain versus sprain. Hmm. Let me let me get this straight before I I open my mouth here. Okay. So tendons and ligaments they do the same thing. They're like straps or cords, and they 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 kind of keep your joint areas together. But Tendons, I want you to think like if any overstretching of a tendon, it's going to lead to damage. Any overstretching of a ligament, it's going to lead to damage. And um, um, so, think, I want you to think strain and sprain are the same exact thing. But if it happens in a tendon, it's a strain with a T. So, T begins with tendon, strain has an ST. Now, a sprain is when a ligament is uh, uh, overstretched, okay? But either way, you have um, uh, localized arthritis, so it's all the same thing. Um, the different bone types, uh, you don't really need to know, but right here, know the difference between uh, bone and cartilage. Bone is much harder, cartilage uh, is uh, softer, but it's also just as, um, um, just as protective, okay? You have epiphysis and diaphysis. Epi, we know, it means what? Right on top. So that's the top parts of your bone and the bottom parts of your bone. You have a covering called the periosteum. Osteo means bone. Peri means surrounding. Osteoblasts versus osteoclasts. Osteoblasts, um, think of it this way. Remember we talked about uh, precursor cells and stem cells, and those are the beginning cells like when you were a baby, and they could be anything. Well, osteoblasts are like baby bone cells. And this is how I remember it. It was a blast to be a kid, osteoblast. And when you have a clast, osteoclast clashes. It breaks down bone. Because in real life, bone is constantly being remodeled. Meaning to say is, um, there's a piece of the bone that breaks down and there's a piece of bone that buildings up. And when you're young, it goes, it's in a nice, um, it's in a nice equilibrium, but as you get older, remember the breakdown or osteoclasts become greater than your osteoblasts, which is your bone forming or your quote unquote baby bone cells. Periosteum covers, if you can see here, is a covering. Peri means surrounding, oste means bone. Your epiphysis, that has to be what? On top. And your diaphysis, remember, complete or thorough. So if I have a diaphyseal fracture, that's what? Complete or thorough, right through the main part, mid-shaft. Proximal or distal epiphysis or an epiphyseal fracture, like here or here. Oops. Here on the top of the bone, and then here on the bottom. Um, there are certain words in anatomy and physiology that mean stuff. Anything that's up in, like something that's out, it's called anthropocity. Anything that uh, getting surf, meaning to say is um, uh, all on socket joints, condyle or now let's look at what a con looks like. If you could see here, that's a condyle, also known as uh, the head of your bone, and that fits into something. And this is a uh, um, this is your uh, thigh bone, which is a classic long bone. Uh, your thigh bone is known as your femur, and this will fit right into a socket or also known as an articulation. So that's called a condyle, that rounded part, and then the head. Okay? Now, a whole bunch of... Bone is a living thing, as you can see here. There's a whole bunch of holes and a whole bunch of cavities in there that's really important. And they're called foramens, fissures, meatus, and sinuses. Okay? These are... Uh, and there just means what? Holes or openings. And when you think about it, if there's a hole or there's an opening, something's in it. There's got to be either um, a blood vessel, an artery, or a nerve that goes through it. So having holes in your head is really important because a lot of important structures. Okay, hold for one minute. All right, I'm back. The bones. Another way, uh, uh, like, to know what the bones are is, like, their location. So if you look at the word cranial, al pertaining to your cranium, 
or your skull cap. Now, the soft parts in your uh, cranial bones when you were like a baby, they're called fontanelles. So, cranial bones, you have the frontal part, which is of course the front temporal, which is the in your temples. And um, you have your coronal suture. Now, what are sutures? When the fontanelles started closing up, they formed these little ridges in your head. And we can look at them um, in a bone. Let's look at a, let's look at a picture of a skull. So, if I look at a picture of a typical skull, uh, that's tiny. Much better. You see the fontanelles are the soft parts. They kind of fuse together and then they form these little lines here. These are called sutures. And of course you got your frontal bone uh, and you know eventually you're going to learn all these things but you could pretty figure them out like frontal. <coughs> Excuse me. Frontal means it's got to be in the front. Parietal, it's got to be in the side. Occipital, it's the thing in the back. And of course your uh, temporal, that's got to be where. Whoops, sorry. This is your temporal. Your temporal, it's got to be where, where your temples are. So, your facial bones. Of course, a nasal bone pertaining to your bones and your nose. Lap lacrimal bone, al, pertaining to um, um, your tears. Zygomatic or cheekbone, and your mandible is your lower jaw. And again, we won't go into super, super detail uh, because this will be in your anatomy and physiology. Just know that phalanges could be either toes or they could be fingers. So phalanges are either upper uh, extremity or lower extremity. And of course your carpals are your wrist and your tarsals are your ankles. Your knee, knee bone is patella. And of course the largest bone in your body, which is your thigh bone, is your femur. And again, I'm, we're not going to go, don't study this in super, super detail yet because um, you need that for your anatomy physiology and not for this class. Only like the basic, basic ones that I, um, that I mentioned in this lecture, that was, um, um, that was, um, that, that's the ones you'll be responsible for. And in order for you to get credit for this class, um, the word of the day is paranasal sinus right here. So in order um, to um, get credit, paranasal sinus. Email that to me at ngarias at stratford.edu and then you will get attendance for today's um, uh, video lecture. Oops, sorry. Okay, now paranasal sinuses, what are they? Al pertaining to para alongside your what? Your nose. Um, your thorax, which is your chest, Okay, your thoracic cage. And sinuses are simple, essentially just, because remember, your bone isn't like solid like, like wood or steel. Your bone is hollow and it's got holes in it and things in it. Like for example, your sinuses, okay? Your sinuses, your skull is practically the most perfect speaker in the world. That is why your voice, when you sing, sounds awesome to you, because you're hearing it through your skull. And, and one of the great things about, one of the main things about great speakers, or very expensive speakers, there are no right angles. Do you see that? Do you see all these uh, spaces and holes? How, uh, and you guys know they exist, because when you get sinus, sinuses, what heavy, then you start talking like this, and it's hard to breathe, and it's why pus and bacteria start getting into these spaces. Here's your thorax, everything in your chest. Okay. This, this is your backbone or the different vertebrae. And let's look at the different classifications. Cervical, al, pertaining to your neck. Thoracic, ic, pertaining to your thorax or chest. Lumbar, remember, your loin, the uh, lower part of your back. Sacral, that's like the very bottom and coccyx that's your tailbone uh, or your coccygeal vertebrae or vertebral area 
uh, your pectoral uh, shoulder, that's your pecs. Remember, your pectoral means your chest, and that's your shoulder girdle. Um, and you also have a shoulder girdle, you also have a pelvic girdle, or your uh, pelvic hip. So, let us now go over, um, now that you have some anatomy and physiology terms, let's go over the terms that are in your text that, that look really good. Uh, ankylo, stiffness, bent or crooked. So, if you have ankylosing spondylitis, that means what? The part of your, it goes, um, the, uh, the part of your bones are what? They're crooked, they're bent. Arthrorhinochiphosis. Osis, you already know it's not a good thing. Uh, lamina, which is a part of your uh, backbone, your vertebra. So if I'm doing a laminectomy, what am I doing to it? I'm removing that part. Lordosis, osis, kyphosis, they're what? Abnormal curvatures of your spine. We already went uh, myel uh, myelitis. Depending on the, um, the context of the word, it's either bone marrow or spinal cord. Ortho, we already went straight, osteo, already bone. Remember, osteoclast versus child or learning walk. Theatrics pertaining to uh, children or um, foot or learning, I guess, are learning to walk. Scoliosis, that's also another crooked bent. Um, abnormal. What are abnormal bendings of the spine? And kind of osis, animal condition. Doesn't that look like a beautiful, all of the above? Thoracotomy, when I'm doing a thoracotomy, right? What am I doing? I'm cutting into your chest. And it could be for what? Unidentified thoracodynia, uh, thoracic pain. Acromial or acromion, pertaining to your acromion. Uh, brachio, we already learned arm. Calcineum, do you, I want you to think heel because something that's calcified is hard and your heel is hard. Uh, cephalo, head, we went, clavicle, dactylo, think fingers and toes. And remember, your phalanges can mean, not only mean your fingers, they can also mean your toes. Hold up, I'm getting a message and it's bothering me. Okay, and we're back. Cephalo, we already know, cervical, clavicle, costal, remember ribs. Okay, so if I have... Uh, costitis, I have inflammation or infection of my ribs, cranial, head, uh, we have a femur, femoral, al pertaining to your, or your thigh bone, the largest bone in your body. Uh, fibulo, it's the, um, your, the bones in your calf. You also have a tibial, so hence the term tib, fib, fracture. So that's in your lower leg. Humero, humerus, that's why they call it the funny bone, that's your upper arm. Your ilium, it's part of your uh, pelvis, so iliopelvic joint, it's part of your pelvis. Ischiopelvic joint, so your ilium and your ischium, I want you to think hip. Lumbo, back, metacarpals, metatarsals, that's uh, the palm and the dorsum of your foot. Dorsum, um, structure of, dorsal, meaning the back part. Patella, knee joint. Pelvic, we already went through. Phalanges, we went through. Podiatry. Now, peds and podiatry, they sound alike. But remember, pediatrics, dealing with children. Podiatry, dealing with feet. Radio, um, the Department of Radiology, study of what? Radiations, x-rays. Okay, also known as diagnostic medicine. Because they not only do x-rays, they also do ultrasound. They also do a lot of therapeutic stuff. Um, so over the over the last two decades, the ex there has been an expansion of the definition of the Department of Radiology. They're not only X-rays. Mm, now remember we talked about smooth muscle versus um, skeletal muscle, right here. Lyo myo. I want you to think smooth or visceral muscle. You cannot control your guts, hence the term visceral muscle. But your muscular uh, uh, muscular items and your muscles like musculo and myo those you can control except for the heart and of course all your visceral or your gut muscles so myocarditis that's a nice word that means I have inflammation or infection of where the muscles of my heart let's look at that and break it down myocarditis 
bit smaller so it could fit. Okay. Chondro, cartilage. Costochondral is the cartilage in your ribs because remember your ribs have to move a little bit. Fascio. Fascia is a fibrous membrane or a fibrous covering of all muscle. So fascioplasty, anytime you really break your muscles or break your bones, you must have a fascioplasty. I gotta put all that covering back together again. Uh, fibro, fibro. It means fibrous. A lot of fibrous. Hold up. Someone's calling. Alrighty. Now, let's go over... No, we already had tendon. Synovial. Pertaining to the synovium, or the structure, of um, uh, an articulating joint. Any joint that can move around requires um, um, a lubrication in the form of synovial uh, membrane and synovial fluid. So think about every joint that you can move around, like your fingers, your shoulders, your hips, and your knees. Those are synovial joints they have these membranes or these coverings that are also have fluid in them okay and the fluid sometimes is in a pocket called the bursa so synovial syno, uh, that means to any joint that moves around a lot and your bursa is the spaces or the little pockets that are in between them that um, house that fluid and that's why if you have cer there's certain types of arthritis called bursitis uh, asthenia we already went through this for anesthesia but asthenias are weakness or debilities so myasthenia and like myasthenia gravis myasthenia you'll have myo muscle weakness and it's a progressive muscle weakness and myasthenia gravis gets kinda scary because remember um, isn't your heart and your lungs a muscle so those two will start to uh, fail as the day gets long we went to blast, we went to class, clasia similar desis you already know malaysia thesis epiphysis um that means growth now diaphysis epiphysis epiphysis is the the ends of the bones that we saw now that's where your bones grow they don't grow from the middle they grow from the ends so damaging the ends when you're young not a good idea not a good thing to happen we already know scar uh porosis porosis to creation that's porous now, normal are supposed to keep in all magnesium. As you grow older, remember we talked about how the bones keep on breaking down and building up? Well, as they're breaking down and building up, as you get older, your bones start to leak out vital things like calcium and magnesium, which are the two main things that make your bones hard. So as you get older, and if you don't take care of yourself, your bones may get brittle because your bones, osteo, will start leaking out or become porous. They'll start leaking out some calcium and magnesium, and then it messes up the bone density. Then your bones get soft, then your bones get brittle, and then they break. Okay? And that's called a pathological fracture. Al, pertaining to logi, the study of patho, disease. A pathological fracture is a fracture you get that because of disease, not really because of force. Um, it, remember we talked about it takes a lot of force to break a bone. You really got to get hit by a car or a truck or really fall from a significant amount of height to really break bones. But as you get older, you, you, have, a, you have a greater risk of a pathological fracture. Okay, And osteoporosis patients, they get them very easy. Supra, above, sub, below. Dis could mean painful. So dystrophy, we already know trophy means growth or process of growing. Dis is bad or painful or difficult growth. Now, let's talk about the people in our neighborhood, which is the different kinds of doctors. So we really talked about orthopedists. Now, another person that we didn't talk about is the rheumatologist. Right here. Now, the rheumatologist, remember we talked about the joint spaces having fluid? Well, rheuma means fluid. So, what does the rheumatologist do? The rheumatologist goes, knows and understands the fluid. And um, they know it a little bit better than the Department of Orthopedics. 
Now you also have another person called your DO. DOs nowadays are multifaceted, they're just like MDs now. But the DO, or the doctor of osteopathy, their main specialty, other than medicine, um, just like us MDs, is that they look at the world through bones and the diseases of bones and joints. So that's what a DO does. The DO goes through very similar training as an MD, but their philosophy is just a little bit different. But they do prescribe drugs and do perform basic surgeries. They do a lot of the things, if almost all the things, that an MD does. And um, they're also doctors, and they also go to school for a very long time. Different kinds of fractures. Uh, there's a nice picture of it. Closed versus open. Complicated or comminuted. Comminuted means, let's look at the comminuted one. Comminuted means you're going to have, you see this here? You're going to have a lot of pieces. Oops. Let me just pan back a little. See that right here? There's like little pieces. That's comminuted. Then you have incomplete, also known as a green stick. That's right here. That it doesn't break all the way. I mean, now, incomplete and green stick are similar, but what makes a green stick special is usually happens in kids less than four years of age because kids don't have a lot of magnesium and calcium and their bones grow faster than they, uh, than they get torn down. A cullis fracture, that's a fracture of your wrist when you, when you fall down. And impacted right here, that's when it like kind of crushes your bones. Infections, osteomyelitis, let's look at those words. Okay, pyogenic bacteria, gen, creation of, pyo, pus, hematoma, uh, oma, which is a uh, tumor, hemat, blood, necrosis, abnormal condition of death. Now, let's talk about that for a minute. There's necrosis. There it is. Necrosis. Osis, abnormal death. Now, what is abnormal death? death before its time all your all your cells in your body have like a time limit but if they die before you know uh, their time to die that's called necrosis okay and we already talked about necrosis a little bit you know when you get in you know you get a really bad scrape that black stuff on the edges of that wound that's dead tissue that's not dirt that's not uh, you know after you clean out the wound and that's why you have to debride that area or scrub it down because uh, they get rid of the dead things now getting rid of dead things because dead tissue create way more dead tissue okay because there's lack of oxygen lack of nutrients and it kind of spreads so we have got to try to stop that we went over the different kinds of spinal curvatures let me pan back here okay and they're all osis all abnormal scoliosis kyphosis right humpback and lordosis this is called swayback scoliosis crooked spine and you can see it forms an s of course you have here some rheumatoid arthritis and rheumatoid rheumat okay the the fluid in your joints the there's there's abnormal fluid in your joints that look like the normal fluid but it isn't and that's what causes all of uh, these joint deformities and osteoarthritis uh, uh, RA is rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis also known as DJD or degenerative joint disease both very debilitating and guess what the part of the remedy or part of the management for uh, any of the arthritis is regular exercise remember if you don't use it you lose it or if you abuse it you lose it so we always have to be in the middle and I'm always promoting um, you know getting in the, uh, the swimming pool um, and it uh, it helps a lot uh, with a lot of the joint issues running is really great for losing weight but it causes a lot of a lot of joint problems so let's look at myasthenia gravis we mentioned it before let's look at this word neurotransmitter um, we should have mentioned it in our uh, neurologic um, chapter. Um, a neurotransmitter is simply a chemical that transmits, trans means across, 
uh, transmits the, uh, the signal from one place to another and it does it through nerves and um, neurotransmitter, the problem in myasthenia gravis is the neurotransmitter is absent and um, because of um, um, autoimmune disease and your body attacks itself you don't have neurotransmitter so no neurotransmitter acetylcholine your your muscles can't move and that's not a good thing so you get like you get this weakness which eventually turns into paralysis and that includes your heart and also your lungs not a good thing here are some diagnostic or, or synthetic related terms you can read all of them the ones I like are um, claudications that's really good um, it says lameness or limping but claudication is really there's not enough oxygen to your um, uh, to your muscles and they get uh, they get really clampy and it really starts to hurt it's almost that that crampiness right before you get a charley horse which is really bad contractures are really bad because there's fibrosis abnormal condition of fibers and then everything gets all um, uh, like stiff and you can't move it crepitation that's when you have a fracture and it makes that crunchy sound um, that's not good electromyography we already talked about in another ganglion a ganglion is just simply a group of, of um, a group of nerves and a ganglion cyst is a nerves uh, usually on your wrist a cyst is a bunch is a cyst that's uh, uh, that culminates around the nerve usually in your wrist hemarthrosis blood abnormal condition of blood and joints so who do you go to go see you get to go see a rheumatologist hypotonia hypertonia tone remember your muscles if you work out a lot your muscles will be toned will be stiff so take a good look at a patient or maybe your grandparents who don't move around so much you look at their their muscles and their skins a little bit more flabby because why well, remember you don't use it you lose it and it's also what happens hypotonia also what happens to astronauts who go up in space too long because you know they're not working their bodies aren't working against gravity so it gets um, it, it starts um, wearing away okay phantom limb the sensation of pain that exists when you uh, get an amputation because remember your nerves still think the rest of your fingers are there um, because it get used to a signal and that's called phantom limb prosthesis mm, now sequestrum and eh, no no let's not go over sequestrum it's not too common Sprain versus strain. We already went over. Oh, subluxation. That's just like dislocation, but it's partial. It's right underneath a full-blown uh, dislocation. Either way, not good. Talipes equinovarus, right? That's an inversion of the hero. We don't need to know that. Um, some ther diagnostic and ther therapeutic stuff. Now. We could go on and on, but the stuff we've been talking about in other uh, in other chapters, except for the scintigraphy. Um, think radio uh, nucleotide. Think radiation. So we put something that's radioactive in you, and it's called a tracer. Let's look. Let me let's lower it a little bit there. Pan back a little. So that's a really nice one. Mm, casting, surgical, arthrocentesis, we already talked about multiple occasions. So this is what Dr. Nicholson did to me a couple of months ago. Or it was almost a year ago. Not too pleasant. Hurt like the Dickens. But hey, it's important because in centesis, what am I doing? There was fluid and blood in here that she had to get out. And she did. And I was able to walk that afternoon. It still hurt like hell, but he was able to walk. Now, the pharmacology, you don't really need to know, but the abbreviations, definitely. And which ones look good to me? Let me just... Um, okay. 
ACL is good because it's common. Anterior crucial ligament. Cru cruce means cross. So they're ligaments that cross your knee in the front part. Okay? Uh, AE, A key, uh, they usually have above the knee, uh, uh, below the knee. Barium enema, right? You know, that's also uh, good to know. Um, CA or CA2 plus for calcium, that's nice. CT, computerized or computed tomography. Remember, a CT scan is just an elaborate computerized x ray that takes it in, in um, sections. DEXA scan or DXA scan, that's a dual energy x ray absorb, absorbitometry. Now, what does that mean? I flood you with a whole bunch of x-rays, your whole body from head to toe, and I do that for osteoporosis patients. DJD, we talked about EMG, FX is short for fracture, uh, hemodine, ah, we don't use that, IV is really important, IM is important, uh, and intercostal space is ICS, not IS. IM, intramuscular, that's a type of injection, intravenous, that's a type of injection, MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, NSAIDs, oh, this is really good. And are like stuff like Tylenol and aspirin, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. That's a nice one to know. What's another one? ROM, range of motion, really common. All the other stuff, eh, not as much. All right, so the rest are, you know, uh, some learning activities and some other stuff. So I think we're kind of good. Um, with this particular chapter, go over, let me see, what do I like for next week's quiz? I'm not going to do parts. I'm going to do something like, here's a good one. I could show this picture and then show you things like, which is the triangle shaped muscle? And that's your deltoid. Your biceps have how many muscles? Two. Your triceps have how many muscles? Three. Your triceps brachii, is that in your arm or is that your leg? Brachii means what? Upper arm. Let me pan back a little bit. I like that kind of question. I like any questions that match up any other chapters like the circle, the, the arms, those nice. That, um, um, and a little fast, but would you really do, really want and look at stuff? Okay, it's at this point, could there also be a quiz right here on this um, uh, this uh, operative report? Right knee arthroscopy and medial uh, menis uh, uh, meniscectomy. Let's say that again. Right knee arthroscopy and medial meniscectomy. Okay? All right, so look at that. It looks really good. There's a pre- and post-operative diagnosis. So there was a diagnosis before and a diagnosis after the surgery. And um, uh, that could be also a nice part of your quiz as well. All right, and I'll put that up as well. Okay, I hope all of you had a wonderful 4th of July, and um, I will see you in class next week. Next week is week 8, and um, we'll go over one last uh, chapter, and... Um, then we'll have a review next week for our um, for our um, final exam, uh, which for you guys it's online. Okay, um, you can start looking at your online uh, final exam around week nine. Okay, but uh, um, what we're going to probably do is like follow the syllabus until like week nine, and then uh, week ten uh, you do your final exam. Um, on your, but please don't forget your exam. And also, just like other exams, your final will uh, is um, um, is due before the term is up. So if I don't see anything by the time I post grades, I'm very sorry. Uh, it'll be a zero. So let's try to tackle that that final exam like around week nine. Okay. All right, everybody. Again, happy Independence Day. I'll see you guys next week.